All right. So today's uh, artist is there's going to be two of them, uh, and I'm I'm I might do a format change. This might be the first of a format change. Uh, up until now, we've just kind of gone through art and just looked at art. And uh, it did occur to me earlier in the week that that maybe I should it would be more helpful to steer a bit more spirituality into it, not just as kind of an adjunct to the conversation, but actually some real real material that's associated with the art as well to kind of make the point more direct, I guess to put more spirit into the art of it. And so uh, I'm going to mix in a little bit of, of some quotes and uh, descriptions of Sri Ramakrishna uh, uh, during the conversation as well. So Victoria Sin to Sin Wai Kin. She was, she's an artist, a, Ch a Chinese artist, uh, but very Western. And uh, so this is sort of a Canadian born West artist, as you see here. Uh, and the change in name is kind of her part of her journey. So Victoria Sin is trying something new. I meet the 29-year-old Canadian-born artist known for their use of performance, film, and speculative fiction to, to deconstruct the limits of the body. At the studio they share with their partner and collaborator, Shy One, they make their living as an artist in London, widely recognized for their distinctive approach to questions of identification. So you can already see where it's going a little bit, and uh, she uses the they pronoun, so it's not a multiplicity of artists, just her using that pronoun. And I'm going to let her go here for about five minutes and sort of present herself to you. I think everybody has an experience of non-binary. Everybody they can recognize the feeling of not quite fitting into a category. So I grew up in Toronto. My father is Hong Kong Chinese. My mother is white British. And I would say I had a pretty strict upbringing. Like a lot of queer people, I had to kind of move somewhere else to like escape narratives and to find my own. I really fell in love with drag in Toronto. But it was like, a, I guess you could say like homonormative drag, whereas um, when I moved to London and discovered the drag scene here, it was like, it was not about trying to be like a perfect representation of a gender that you weren't. It was about like blowing up gender and identity completely. So the dream of the butterfly is a famous uh, Taoist allegory. Chuan Tzu, who is a like kind of foundational philosopher of Taoism, has a dream that he's a butterfly. And when he wakes up, he's no longer sure if he is a butterfly dreaming he's a man or a man who is dreaming he was a butterfly. These kinds of stories, these allegories, these like philosophies, they help me to try to undo binaries that have to do with just being human. So not only gender, but thinking about like life and death and self and other, dreaming and waking. Taoism has really helped me to address like every binary and try to undo like every false dichotomy as I encounter it. A dream of wholeness and parts, I want to function very much like the dream of the butterfly. So this is a suit that I had made in the film, it's the construct, where is it? The inspiration was kind of like a, somewhere between like Mars attacks and like an interplanetary like real housewife. These are the shoes that I had made for the two sides of the construct. For me, like these, like, you know, the rhinestones and the pearls are kind of like stars and planets and moons and stuff. And this hanging planet or like pearl that kind of like does these uh, orbits like as you walk. This is the wig that the construct wears. And this is my own hair. I had this hair for like seven years, it was like very much like part of my identity, you know, so kind of like taking that off and then putting it back on is like, uh, it's like a weird space to be in. In this kind of like shedding of this previous self, I'm trying to ask myself and of course others, at what point we become aware of the performance of, of the self. 
So this is the this is the universe of hair, and this is like my first kind of like um like masculine drag character wig, you know. I ordered this wig that was cheap wig from eBay that I like really love the color of, and I literally I I was going to get my hair cut and I took it with me and my hairdresser. He cut my hair and then he cut the wig hair. My characters they, I would say they all exist in the same universe. They keep evolving, like I keep evolving. To quote Octavia Butler, the only everlasting truth is change. You know, and that's like a central tenet of Taoism as well. The act of naming is actually totally futile. The name is the guest of the substance. I remember doing a performance and coming back to my dressing area and my wet wipe looked like it was looking back at me, like the character that I had just taken off was there on the wipe and it was just looking back at me. Um, and so I started keeping them. You know, I spent hours painting these faces. You know, the characters are always transforming and evolving and these, you know, wet wipe works, they can archive the transformations. A really good example of like how fantasy can influence reality is like when I was like putting on and taking off purposefully this like exploded representation of gender for my body. It was like experiencing these like very changing relationships that made me realize that I wasn't a woman. I have had to unlearn so many narratives that I just accepted about myself. You know, thinking about the dream of the butterfly, once you start questioning one aspect of yourself or you learn that something that you thought you knew about yourself was actually just something that somebody told you about yourself, it opens a huge set of doors. Like, that's just like the, the nature of knowledge. Like, the more that you know, the more that you know that you don't know. All right. She says so many delicious so, things in there. <laughs> delicious. Just delicious. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, boy, the work she's doing with herself is, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit envious of it in a way, how she's completely mm -hmm. dismantling uh, her perspectives and ideals and uh, in doing it in such a such a interesting investigative way. Mm -hmm. Um I wrote down some of the things that she said here. And so if you, you know, join in for sure, if there's anything mm -hmm. here, this, this notion of feeling non-binary, uh, you know, that seems to be the root of this, of this gender identity period that we're going through where people either feel that they have a different gender from their body or that they, that they're genderless or that they just feel a very different expression of gender. Uh, a, a, a gender, uh, you know, and, and quite often we want to equate gender and sex. Uh, but I, you know, in my mind, uh, those have always been different. You know, sex is, is of the body. It's like it's an un, it, pretty much unchangeable unless you go through drastic measures. Whereas mm -hmm. gender is kind of the, the self, your, your mental, your personality's relationship with uh, mm -hmm. sex, with the body. And uh, and so to to find individuals, you know, it's kind of funny to me because normally religion or not religious, but religious people uh, normally have a very judgmental feeling toward this kind of thing mm -hmm. and and uh, are very adamant about it. You know, there's there's two. You get to be a man or a woman. And it's very easy to see what you are and there's no further conversation. But I find that to be rather uh, forced, uh, you know, in mm -hmm. a sense. Mostly because obviously that's not everybody's experience. And yeah, okay. uh, secondly, uh, because of this notion that we aren't any of this, you know, let alone binary gender, anything, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're very different. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I find that people who are thinking about this, I'm rather encouraged about it from a spiritual perspective, uh, because I think to, to come to an awareness of yourself as being separate from the body 
-hmm. to the extent that you question a gender identity seems to be an amazing spiritual accomplishment to yeah. me to actually reach that point where it seems that real to you uh you know and i think uh i, I interestingly enough you know I'm, I'm putting together a class on on uh, gay spirit because i've been asked we've got quite a few people here that come to our classes that mm -hmm. are uh, uh you know, you know uh, well i don't know what you what do you call that gender questioning let's say Mm -hmm. And uh, so I want to be able to have a, a, a conversation about that um, to say not so much to encourage the investigation, first of all, you know, about who and what we are, but also to say, don't get stuck in the questioning. You know, the mm -hmm. questioning isn't going to be that you are some different gender or that you are some mm -hmm. other expression of a gender. The comfort zone is that we're all of them. We, we hold all genders within ourselves. Mm -hmm. And to not be attached to any of them. And of course, have the courage to be and ex investigate what you need to investigate. That's the point of being on the planet. That's the point of mm -hmm. having a body of going, of being here is to investigate and work out those things. You know, Ram Vivekananda talks about life being expression. Mm -hmm. You know, that we're trying to learn to express this real self. And along the way, we're going to make lots of expressions. Some of them, it will turn out, don't belong to the real self and some are. So her going in and blowing up gender and identity completely. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's very interesting drag. Uh, you know, if you watch a drag show, you can see quite clearly that it's not about men being women. There are no women anywhere who walk around looking like drag queens. Well, maybe maybe in Texas, but <laughs> 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 but they're there, you know, it's so it's a different kind of thing going on. There's a different investigation going on there. I love her notion of the Taoist butterfly, that story. Yeah. Uh, That's you just know, beautiful. It really is, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's very true. You know, there's a there's a there's a, a, a Vedantist story, not about the butterfly, but about the the man who goes to sleep and dreams that he's a king with seven sons. Right. And in that dream, those seven sons die and he wakes up the next day and his in the real in the, the waking world. He has only one son who dies and he doesn't mourn that son. And the, his wife is like, what? Why? Why aren't you mourning your son? What kind of heartless fool are you? And, and he says to her, well, I don't know who to mourn. Should I mourn my one son who has lost his life or should I mourn the seven sons that lost their life last night? You know, it really demonstrating the notion that this world is illusory, that that it is dreamlike, and that it's no more real than that dream. And having that notion, understanding that, gives you a lot of permission for exploration, which I think uh, our artist here is taking full advantage of. So she's trying to address these binaries and undo every false binary. You know, because that's exactly what the Vedantist is trying to do or what we're trying to do is that we're caught in the world of dualities, you know, hot and cold, right and wrong, good and good and evil, happy, sad. And that that as long as we're stretched in this world of, of these two dualities, which is really born of the idea that we've become two people inside, at least two, you know, sometimes even more than that. Uh, to have that insight, to go inside and see what your binaries are, not mm -hmm. just in gender, but just in life. What are the what are the opposites that you are lost in, that you struggle in, that your attachments betray? You know, when she references the construct, you know, that 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 was how she talks about the character mm -hmm. that she plays. You know, she didn't talk about her as a woman. She didn't talk her about as a man mm -hmm. or or a drag persona. It's a construct, and I thought that that was very interesting uh, way to talk about it, because in fact, Swami C is a construct. You know, uh, Vance, you know, is another construct, and both of them are carried in the same body mind here. But I think it's a very healthy way of seeing ourselves in this world as a construct. And to realize that we are something that we've put together both consciously and unconsciously and present consciously and unconsciously. 
And I think a lot of spirituality, especially around the idea of being witness, is becoming aware of your construct, becoming aware of the things that are not you, but that you are presenting, you know, either out of habit or out of socialization or out of nationality or sexuality or whatever it is, to become aware of what's you and what's not you, you know, or, or what the relationship is between those things. When she takes out that wig and she talks about the construct wears this wig, and then she says it's her hair, <laughs> and that she wore that hair for a long time when she was, you know, as a, as the woman, and uh, it was fascinating to me in my mind having her hold a wig that was her hair that was being used to build a construct of a different character in the movie. Mm -hmm. I really stretched my mind a little bit there, played some mm -hmm. games, it made it, it really brought home this notion. Uh, these things are in fact constructs that I could take off my hair and mm -hmm. create a wig, you know, that would become part of another character. It's not, it's no longer an expression of who I am. And she talks about that there, that hair as identity, taking it off and putting it on. You know, shedding your previous self. You know, that's every every Christian that goes through the rite of baptism is going through that exercise, shedding off the old self, dying to the world. When I joined the monastery, I had to, to do uh, one of the rituals that we do is perform my own uh, shraddha, my own my own uh, uh, funeral ceremony for wow. myself. And not just for myself, but for my parents, for all of my friends, and mm. for all of my relatives going back as far uh, as far back as I could remember. Uh, so it's it's shedding off, and that's one of the reasons that monks in the order traditionally are do not have contact with home or don't go home again for twelve years uh, after they after they renounce, because we're trying to shed that previous self, and there's nothing more more rooted in us than being our mother's son or our father's son or mother's daughter. You know, that relationship is automatic. You will never be anything more to your parents than their child, you know? And so it's one of the reasons. Uh, when, when do we become aware of this performance mm -hmm. of self? Mm -hmm. At what point do we wake up? And see it and understand it as a as a performance, as Takor would talk about himself as a pillowcase you know, <laughs> and refer to oh. himself as this place, you know, those who come to this place, meaning him, you know, he never used the word I. So he fully understood that even as the avatar, even as Sri Ramakrishna, he was a construct. And that's why he called it a play, this Leela of the divine. You are the divine mother in costume i am the divine mother in costume you know that we are presenting and playing out an idea and what is that idea of any any wonder any answer what is it that we're playing How about um, yeah what what are we playing swami is that what mm -hmm. you asked mm -hmm. What is it that we're playing out? If we're God, what? if every one of us is the right. same, all playing oh. out. Yeah, we're, well, you're playing out the Leela. Well, that's the Leela, correct? We're playing mm -hmm. out all the facets of, of who we are and who the universe is, right? And yeah. is that correct? Yeah. 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 Um, sure. yeah, but you're playing out all the constructs. You're looking at all the identities that you've had and where you've been. It, um, yeah, it's the whole dynamics of uh, human existence for an individual, right? Yes, yes. In specific, we are, each one of us, a complete story of love, wisdom, and existence. Exactly, yeah. Those, those three fundamentals, all of us are a story of love. You know, everything that we do in our life, we do for love. You know, that's how we make our decisions. Would you rather go to Paris or would you rather go to Rome? Mm, no, I like mm -hmm. Rome. Let's go to Rome. And so you go to Rome because your desire, your love leads you there. And so all of us are a, are a story of God. 
one facet of what God as love looks like, each one of us. And when you take the sum of everyone that's ever lived, in all of the numbers of stories and expressions of love, each one of them being a single facet or a single line of the story, and put them together, you get God. You get that divinity. So we're here playing this game. You know, the act of naming is futile, you know, because we all know name and form, you know, they they, <laughs> they don't really exist. They're what the mind does. The mind takes the unity, breaks it into the multiplicity, mm -hmm. and then creates relationship as it tries to reconstruct that unity in the mind. Mm -hmm. And so what, we, what do we have to do? That we have to unlearn the narratives that you assume define yourself. Mm -hmm. So here is a spiritual teaching through and through from a drag queen. Mm -hmm. And the irony is she's a female drag queen, mm -hmm. which again mm -hmm. puts another bender on the idea right. that, right. It, that it's clearly not about being the opposite sex or being a different gender than what you are, that because otherwise she couldn't be a drag queen because she's already that gender. Mm -hmm. But being a drag queen is an exploration. It's, an, it's a blowing up of gender altogether, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a playing mm -hmm. with these ideals. Mm -hmm. And so, Swami, all the facets, you know, all the gods and goddesses in Hinduism uh, are all manifestations of all of this, correct? See, we don't have a lot of that in Christianity. See, and, mm -hmm. you know... Yeah, absolutely true. It's, it's interesting because certainly if if you go back to the like the Greek gods, they had just as much fun as the Hindus have yeah, yeah, in, they did. in, in playing right. with the gods and goddesses and their expressions of gender and sexuality and power and all of those right. things. Right. You, know, you, you see that story told again. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's quite quite a marvelous setup. And then how she ends with, of course, the words of wisdom, the more you learn, the more you know that you don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and because change is constant that, she tells that at one point yes. early on change is constant yes the only immortal truth is change yeah mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. that's buddhists right. lie heavily on that also mm -hmm. of course ramakrishna says that that proves that it's unreal that there is something real behind it all which is a little bit of a different tack than what eastern uh well taoism and buddhism and uh, uh confucianism shinto Oh, okay. yeah. So they're they're not uh, they don't have that idea of uh, an often of a reality behind the changing. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. Or they don't talk about it anyway. Mm -hmm. So all right, let's see here. So here she is in two of her personas. Of course, on the left, that's more her <laughs> her operating per construct, I mm -hmm. guess. Mm -hmm. And then, and then on the right, you see these these, uh, I guess aspects of femininity that she's playing mm -hmm. with there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in that expression, mm -hmm. and how different they are. Mm -hmm. you know, what different personas there are there. So here she says, femininity is something that I was very strictly brought up with. It is something that has been policed in yeah. and on my body, by my family yeah. and friends, with good intention. Yeah. I realize yeah. now that femininity also carries with it race and class connotations. Yeah. Yeah. It's something that I enjoy partaking in sometimes, but not when people think it means they can treat me in a certain way. Yeah. It's something that can be empowering, but for many people is not. It's hard to sum up what femininity means to me, as it's a lot more than all of those things. But drag is a way for me to perform it and to think through it without being read as performing it to serve, but rather to challenge the patriarchal mm -hmm. gaze. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. well, how, exactly. how, would you, how would you define femininity for yourself? Do you have... Do you have an idea of what it means to be feminine? Well, for me, it was um, having a child, being a mom. Or a motherhood, um, yeah. yeah, motherhood for me, yeah. And um, nurturing, um, not suppressing um, my own constructs. My, you know, I was raised very liberal, not liberally, but yeah, liberally, and then to love 
to love being feminine, to love being a man or whatever, whatever you were, um, and to help do that with my child, I think was part of being feminine. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, yes, yeah. yes, I do. Um, it's interesting because uh, I, I found, uh, you know, I went to a poetry reading in, in upstate New York when I was at the Holy Cross Monastery up there. And uh -huh. uh, there were uh, quite a few women there. And one of the conversations that came up was about femininity. And I made a mistake <laughs> that I didn't realize I was making. I think I shared this once before, but where I, I shared that I had a little bit of an envious feeling toward women because they have such a connection uh, with, with their children, you know, that they carry within themselves this child for nine months, go through the whole extremely intense process of birthing that child and then use their self-same body to nurture that child mm -hmm. and to, to, to bring that child to a point of independence. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what I, what I was sharing was that as a man, I look at that and I think, gosh, I could never feel that kind of connection. You know, and I, th we definitely see that played out with the way men are with their kids and the way women are with their kids. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, there's just a very different dynamic uh, between mm -hmm. children and their fathers and mothers. Mm -hmm. And so I was sharing that I thought that that was such a beautiful thing in being a woman. And boy, I got read the riot act, yeah. you know, because apparently many women feel like that, that tendency toward nurturing is used to box them in to that mm -hmm. role mm -hmm. and to not allow, allow them to work outside of that definition. Mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. boy i walked right into that one i had i had never even thought about that but it's very true in that sense mm -hmm. you know, that's, yeah and that's some true. women are not interested you know in in uh giving birth or um being some women are not into being feminine in the physical sense you know and they should be i mean when people have really strived to do that you look at patty you know patty smith did have children but that's who i idolized as a young woman I loved mm -hmm. Patty Smith. I thought she was just, you know, brilliant and mm -hmm. that androgynous um, feeling. But also, you know, not every woman, you know, can be a mom or can be nurturing. Whereas a lot of, you know, some men can can step right into that too, I feel. I yeah. Know. Yeah, no, I definitely think so. I definitely, I def and I think that that is hopefully where we arrive where gender mm -hmm. is an expression and not a limitation mm -hmm. you know that gender is an, an art form and not a rule exactly. you know for us exactly to to yeah. experience to, to experience the world you know in that way mm -hmm. and this patriarchal gaze that's another oh phrase. i love that yeah 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 i've heard a lot about that about uh that women can't escape the gaze of men oh yeah yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. 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 I, and it's it's interesting because I've talked to, to two transgender people, one male to female and one female to male, about that experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, the female to male uh, gave an experience where she said that she was almost shocked by the primal competition that happens between men on the sidewalk all of the subtle rules oh, about how men pass each other and if you've got your girlfriend with you there's a whole other set of rules yeah. you know of of how how that interaction happens and there's always a quick and very subtle not even sometimes uh not Conscious. even done consciously of a sizing up who's the alpha you know who's 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 yeah. who's, who's the bigger and, uh, you know, she she wrote a whole article for, I think, for the New York Times on that whole experience, or he, uh, what she recognized uh, for being a man. And, of course, uh, for the man going to the woman, uh, I think we know, I, it's almost interestingly uh, interesting to me as to whether a, a male becoming trans is becoming a woman or becoming his idea of a woman you know it would be a, an interesting thing to mm -hmm. ask it's like mm -hmm. is he because he's fully familiar obviously with the patriarchal gaze from the man's perspective mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and as he steps into being a woman is he stepping into being a woman or is or an idea of a woman mm -hmm. and uh 
uh, you know, I'm, I'm not saying one way or the other. I'm just not raising the question, really, because if 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 a person I, I suspect if they feel like they really are a woman in a man's body, then they are at some level expressing a woman. But how would you sort that out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's important to ask the questions and to say, you know, yeah. And that's what's so welcoming about you. I'm so glad you're doing that group with um, queer folks. I think that's just wonderful, Swami, you know, because that's been lacking. Um, yeah, not just lacking, but religion has been a forbidden territory for uh, that segment of the population uh -huh. and, and uh -huh. unnecessarily so, you know. And the and whole so Christian right movement is coming out so anti-trans. I was just reading all about this. It's terrible yeah. what they're, yeah. it's so frightening. You know, being yeah. in Oregon and I'm in a nice large apartment building, I, you know, I've gotten to know a lot of kids that have transitioned and it's just wonderful. And they've been so abandoned by their family. So they joke and call me the Jewish mom. You know, I mean, I'm, <laughs> it's, it's so, it's just really what some of these kids have been through is, is amazing. Um, yeah. And so ridiculed and ostracized by our society. Yeah. So I think it's this, great yeah. what you're doing, Swami. I think it's really, really important. Yeah. And well, it's coming, it's coming from seeing that, you know, it's coming from seeing it around me there in that sense. It is important. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful that you've got the, she's, she's really, since she's a Taoist, you know that she's doing the yin yeah. and yang there, yeah. male and female. Right. Uh, and, and really making a statement because the the symbol that yin and yang symbol is is drawn that way because it's you cannot anytime you bifurcate that circle no matter how you cut it in half you will always have <clears throat> the same amount of black and the same amount of white on each side mm -hmm. one it's always always equal so she said if you were assigned female at birth or you present as feminine now, you've been measured against an ideal image of femininity. Yeah. yeah. Growing up, every image of femininity was skinny, white, cookie cutter. Exactly. I was obsessed with that and old Hollywood versions of it. Mm -hmm. A lot of my early drag was trying to attain this moving goalpost ideal of Western femininity. Yeah. I was trying to embody and explode this image of white femininity to say, look, I can do it, and it's not real. <laughs> yeah, she's wonder, great, Swami. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I really enjoy her her perspective on things. I, I find a lot of freedom in it. You know? mm -hmm. and, well, she uh, articulates it beautifully. She does. She does. It's something she's really exploring and really looking at. And you know, uh, when I talk about spiritual life with uh, with either trans people or uh, with gay people, I find that being under that set of conditions growing up has caused them to become incredibly insightful. You know, yeah, I uh, agree. Mm -hmm. most people grow up, you know, if you're, if you are a normal quote, big quotes, normal person, society never challenges who you are. You know, they don't challenge who you are. They And you don't have to wonder about who you are. Every Disney movie has painted your life for you. You know, yes. every love story has mapped out how to interact with the opposite sex and what the goal is and how it's going to work together. And, you know, it's just mm -hmm. all you have to do is just keep walking. You know, that's life. But, you know, for, for a transgender person who doesn't feel like they are what their body presents, they're constantly asking, well, mm -hmm. what about me? Who am I? How do I fit into this picture? Or a gay person, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, yes, the body naturally is for reproduction, but if a person's gay, their body's not for reproduction. Mm -hmm. And they, what does that mean? How can this mm -hmm. be? How can I feel this way? How can I think this way? How can I be this way? Why? You know, mm -hmm. and what mm -hmm. am I supposed to do with it? There's no movie for me. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no Disney for, for a, a lesbian woman or a gay man, mm -hmm. there's, there's, yeah. there's no map. How do I react? How do I interact? Right. You know, right. Do I date? Is it right? Is it not right? Mm -hmm. now, I remember a devotee mm -hmm. in San Francisco, uh, a young man whose boyfriend asked him to marry him. And he went into a real quandary because he didn't know if that was dharmic or not. And so he mm -hmm. went to Swami Prabhutananda and asked him, he said, Maharaj, 
what do I do? Uh, you know, I want to do what's right. And and Swami actually admitted, he says, I don't know. Let me do some research and, and get back to you. And, and about three months later, Swami called him into his office and he says, see, I've, I've searched. I don't see anything in the scriptures about this. He says, and so in that circumstance, you have to create your own dharma. Mm -hmm. You have to forge your own way. And so he ended up marrying his, his mm -hmm. uh, partner and uh, and carrying on. But that's the kind of struggle that that mm -hmm. is facing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and I think part of it is in the modern world, you know, men don't have to get up in the morning and grab a gun or a bow and arrow and run out and hunt for the day, you know, and do all of that active. And we don't have to defend against the neighboring tribe and, you know, protect our wife from being stolen. <laughs> So right, gender right. norms have changed radically over time. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there really isn't a reason for masculinity and femininity in modern society. You know, right. <laughs> there's not really the necessity of it. And yet we hold on to them very tightly, you know. And so I think this is all why this is being brought up to the front, because fundamentally, as she says there in that last sentence, it's not real. And it's a good thing to look into and to question mm -hmm. And to mm -hmm. test the boundaries of these things mm -hmm. in, a, in a healthy way. All right. So here yeah. I wanted to jump into some interesting things about Sri Ramakrishna that I've gathered. This is just a quick gathering of some of the some of the things. Uh, I'm hoping that this turns into a full-on study. Uh, I, I yeah, think it that, should, Swami. Yeah. Yeah, I find some very very pointed, interesting things in the life of Ramakrishna. Uh, that I think could be very valuable for some of some folks dealing with this with this experience. Oh, sure. I think it would be great. Yeah. So this is from the 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 uh, great master. One of the sadhanas that Ramakrishna did. One of the sadhanas was to root out the sex idea. Soul has no sex. It is neither male nor female. It is only in the body that sex exists. And the man who desires to reach the spirit cannot, at the same time, hold to sex distinctions. Wow. That's wow. a very powerful statement right there. Mm -hmm. Having been born in a masculine body, this man, Ramakrishna, wanted to bring the feminine idea into everything. He began to think that he was a woman. He dressed like a woman. He spoke like a woman. He gave up the occupations of men and lived in the household among the women of a good family until after years of this discipline, his mind became changed and he entirely forgot the idea of sex. Thus, the whole view of life became changed to him. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. This is not a drag wow. queen. <laughs> this right. is Sri Krishna. Right. This is an avatar, someone we worship on par with, yeah. you know, Jesus mm -hmm. and Buddha. What what he he is the original trans, mm -hmm. you know. Did you find this? Huh? Was, is this from the older translation of the Great Master, or is this from Chaitananda's Ananda's translation? Uh, this is from the older one. Yeah, I don't know if it's if it's changed in the newer one or not. This is from mm -hmm. the older one though. Mm -hmm. Under yeah. the section on his sadhanas, I'm gonna I'll look that up. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. Yeah. You know, I had not. I knew some of this, but it's not really been discussed, Swamiji. No, it's you not know? discussed. As, it's not. as a matter of fact, you know, like I said, I, I wanted to do a lecture on these these <laughs> ideas and was told no. <laughs> the reason I was given was told no, wow. they said, was because it was too political. Uh, but that's, <laughs> you know, it's, yes, anyway. <laughs> that's not my point. <laughs> so too this political? Is yeah, wow. yeah. All right. Sorry. This is also okay. from the great master. There was in the master an extraordinary blend of the natures of both man and woman. Mm -hmm. Under the influence of one of them, he appeared to be the best of austere, valorous men, fearless mm -hmm. like a lion, who would not rest satisfied without probing everything to the very bottom, while under the influence of the other, he became possessed of a wonderful feminine nature, tender yet severe, applying himself to seeing and weighing things and persons in, the, persons in the world through his own heart. He became by nature deeply attached to or detached from certain things and could bear with ease endless troubles when the heart responded. 
you know so here it's talking about him uh, you know and i did a greg did a marvelous experiment when he was in the monastery in san francisco way back when i joined around 2001 that's that standard picture of ramakrishna that we worship that that on my, is on most people's shrine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He took that picture as it just as an experiment. He took that picture and he cut it vertically in half and he put the two left sides together and the two right sides together. And she, and called me in to look at to look at these two pictures. It was stunning because when you take the, the left side, the, the as you look at the picture, if you take the two right sides, he's he's a woman. The picture is of a woman. He has breasts. Mm -hmm. He has a dainty yeah. shoulder, thinner arm. And if you take the other half, that other arm is a man's arm. It's a big arm. You know, there, there's no breasts. Mm -hmm. When you put them together, he looks like there's a man and there's a woman. He is the full embodiment of both. It's quite, quite an amazing thing. Yeah, look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm looking yeah. at it now. You're right. Yeah, hold it up to your camera for us so we can see. If you just look. Oh, I have. It's, yeah. yeah. There it is. See? You see that, Bindu? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is really oh. interesting, Swami. It is. It's fascinating. It's a fascinating thing. <laughs> this is thing. really cool. You're really cool. It's really, it's really important. Yeah. Now, this is from the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, Master to the Young Man. A man can change his nature by imitating another's character. He can get rid of a passion like lust by assuming the feminine mood. He gradually becomes to act exactly like a woman. I have noticed that men who take female parts in the theater speak like women or brush their teeth like women while bathing. While worshiping God, one should assume a definite attitude. I have three attitudes, the attitude of a child, the attitude of a maidservant, and the attitude of a friend. For a long time, I regarded myself as a maidservant and a woman companion of God. At that time, I used to wear skirts and ornaments like a woman. You know, so, and actually for six months, he did that sadhana, where he dressed, not just dressed, he became a woman for six mm -hmm. months. Spoke mm -hmm. like her, did women's work, took the women's role, you know, uh, stayed in the inner apartments of some devotees' homes as a woman, you know. It's this. This is so astounding to me because you know, United States, American, Western culture. We like to think of ourselves as so free and so you know, blah blah blah. Nobody could do this and get away with it, you know. And to be a to be a temple priest, and to dress yeah. as a woman and be a become a woman in worship. And be given mm -hmm. space for that, mm -hmm. and being respected for that. What mm -hmm. an amazing, you know, Indian culture is so deep. I, uh, there's no way I can understand mm -hmm. it. There's so many different levels within that culture that 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 I, I simply don't understand. I simply don't understand how it works. Mm -hmm. But I find it beautiful that a man like Ramakrishna could have a sadhana mm -hmm. of this type, mm -hmm. and and still be what he is. You know, mm -hmm. still be what he is an doing. avatar. Yeah, exactly. He was an avatar. Yeah, and he was. He was. Yeah, he was looking through the constructs, and he was the construct, Swami. Yes, yeah, exactly. Very profound. This is. Are you going to share this with your group in in Colorado? Uh, well, it's going to be. It'll be. It'll be online. It'll be. Oh, online. it's going to be online. Yeah, you should get me yeah. that information because I can give it to some kids around here. Yeah. Oh sure. It's, oh sure. No, it'll really be on, cool. on, on YouTube under the Monkotronic channel. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. So Kim Lutweiler, there's there's at least five other quotes about Sri Ramakrishna and his experiences as as a woman that I didn't didn't put in. Uh -huh. But Kim Lutweiler here is a uh, uh, a an artist that explore, explores drag through painting. And this is one of her paintings of a friend of hers named Brian Firkus, who is the creator of the persona Trixie Mattel. If if you're watching uh, what RuPaul's Drag Race at all, which I've mm -hmm, actually never mm -hmm. seen a full copy. Oh, it's show. fun! It's it's fun. You should watch it. It's fun. Yeah, well, I like RuPaul. This, this is Trixie Mattel here, and 
She painted him. And she says, an American drag queen, singer, songwriter, comedian, author, and television personality, Trixie is best known for being the winner of the third season of RuPaul's Drag Race, All Stars. Mm -hmm. Brian, the man behind Trixie, is half Ojibwe and comes from a Native American family living in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. He had an abusive mm -hmm. stepfather who would call him a Trixie when he acted uh, feminine, which mm -hmm. would later inspire his drag name. Brian has an incredible story, so I couldn't resist reaching out for a portrait sitting. So this is Brian, and and uh, you can see her plays with gender in it, you know, the color combinations. He's he's definitely dressed ma as a male, but the feminine there is very demure. <laughs> I mean, you can see his his posture his hands taking up a small amount of space. He's presenting feminine in a feminine way, uh, but dressed as a man, you know? And so you see that combination of, of, of male and female and the question of gender in there, in her expression. And here is Trixie Mattel. <laughs> same, <laughs> the same man. You know, and what I like about this is you can look at it. In what ways is this not a woman? You see that it's an exaggeration of everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I always find it fascinating that in drag, the eyes in particular are always so emphasized. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. Mm hmm. And is that why, why would that be? Is it because of the gaze? Is it because of the patriarchal gaze? Is it, is it a, is it a. Yeah, I would think it would be. Yeah. I, I think it would be a response to the patriarchal gaze. Put it right back at them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just look right there. And it's always so big. It's always, it's so clearly mm -hmm. costume and so clearly character construct, mm -hmm. you know, so drawing full attention to itself, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. there really is Everything something Everything is extremely uh, yeah. exaggerated yeah yeah here's her portrait of elise lutweiler an artist living in portland oregon she creates mm -hmm. art and toys meant to inspire the same whimsy that comes so easily to our inner child mm -hmm. you know? And I really like her idea there, the same whimsy that comes so easily to our inner child. You know, that mm -hmm. that to me is the self. The undefined, ever free, ever pure, ever blissful, playing in the Leela of this world, mm -hmm. expressing itself, painting its own idea of love, mm -hmm. painting its own idea of wisdom, mm -hmm. and, and living life fully. And here we've got the opposite construct going on. You know, we have a woman who's got partially shaved head presenting as male mm -hmm. in a masculine dress. Uh, you know, just she's she's the colors are a little bit lighter. They're a little bit more pastel-y with her. There's a lot of pinks in her. And yet mm -hmm. clearly how she's standing there, you know, kind of taking up room, semi-relaxed, somewhat defensive toward the camera, all very male specific uh, presentations of herself, her glasses, you know, very interesting. You know what I'm fla what I'm flashing on right now as we're discussing this, and I think you all have probably seen this with some of the swamis. I, I used to see it a lot with the Sheshanand and some of the older swamis. They would be like little children when they would get together. Mm. You know, I don't know if you've noticed that. I mean, it was really quite extraordinary how yeah. they would be they would be like kids and and so much love. And, um, you know, I, I, I would I would remember that with him, um, yeah. the love. And, and I mean, of course, when sometimes, you know, when he was working with teaching us, it was very different. But when he was relaxed or, you know, particularly out in nature, he would be like a little kid. It was really quite extraordinary to see. I not see, yeah, not right? attached to the body, you know, not, you know, he really, yeah. he, towards the end, his clothes were like sort of rags, you know, <laughs> but he yeah. changed everybody's life who came in contact with him. It was really quite, yeah. but like, like a child, his love and his devotion to all of us, he really loved, it was love, exactly like what you say. Yes, exactly. And and to be like a child it's is to be without gender. You know the, exactly. that uh, we, ha we haven't gone through that change in the body, and and 
you're you're gender free. Of course, society heavily imposes the gender identity on you. But as a child, you know, it's not <laughs> it's not all that important. There's a mm -hmm. uh, there's a uh, I read in a book one time about uh, the position. There's a in Native American uh, society, there was something called the Berdash, and the Berdash were were gay were gay men, and uh, there was a ritual mm -hmm. that all children went through uh, when they reached a certain age within this tribe. I, I have to pull the book out to get the details out of it, but they were put in a pen. With, which had, you know, women's articles of traditionally women's work on, oh. mixed in with articles of traditional male things. And if the child chose the opposite gender materials, they were raised as a birdosh. And the birdosh oh, were the medicine, the medicine men, and they would yeah, actually yeah. live outside of the circle of tents. And during, uh, during an, uh, annual celebrations, they would come in and do skits and shows that would that would uh, parody aspects of community that they thought should have attention brought to them. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah. you can see sort cool. of in the same way that gay culture plays out those things in in our in our society. There was actually a a a definition and a prescribed role for these 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 men in in uh, traditional cultures. And uh, yeah, I found that yeah. very, very, very interesting that that actually in an it's, indigenous culture they recognized a separation from gender and sex. You know that they yes. they saw they saw a different and and came up with a test for it, and then a mm -hmm. life path for it, and then a contribution mm -hmm. that those people made to mm -hmm. the culture and to the society. So this person here this is the same person. It's a painting. So it's him at, in both of his constructs or her constructs. Shane Janik, better known under the stage name Courtney Act, is an Australian drag queen, singer, and television personality. And she says during, this is something I like here, she just discussed a little bit about uh, while she was painting him and getting to know him. She says, during our sittings, we discussed life, love, gender expression, and the many permutations of queerness we've experienced while living and traveling overseas. It's a beautiful thing to meet someone and feel so instantly connected and comfortable in their presence. Perhaps that connection is bound to happen between two queer people who are openly and unapologetically themselves at all times, says Ludweiler. As always, I blended realism and abstraction as a subtle vernacular to portray the fluidity and complexities of identity and sexuality. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So just putting the two, <laughs> the two together, like that. All right, that is the art for today. Oh my gosh, where it's already five oh five. I thought that was. Oh, be sorry. Fun. Yeah, that was wonderful. So, yes, I'm going to stop the recording.